you have the 4004, and I think you spent a lot of time on the road trying to get design wins on that. But compare the 4004 to the 8008. Was the 8008 <laughs> flashingly faster? No, the 8008 was slower. <laughs> even surprisingly, even slower at 8 bit arithmetic. And I don't know if you want me to mention, there, there's a book out now that supposedly tells the story of <laughs> Intel. <laughs> now, I can only speak to about a tenth of this book, about 50 pages. It has, I think, I've counted something like 80 mistakes in those pages. <laughs> and one of the things that it declared was that the 8008 was a turbocharged version of the 4004. And it says that the 4004 had a clock speed of 108 kilohertz and that the 8008 had an 800 kilohertz clock and that meant there was an 8 to 1 ratio. Well, first of all, the clock speed on the 4004 was 740 kilohertz. The 108 number comes from a misunderstanding. Uh, an instruction cycle, when you're running a 740 kilohertz <coughs> clock, and you take eight clock steps to do it, is 10.8 microseconds. That's not 108 kilohertz. <laughs> <laughs> now, the 8008, as it came out early 1972, had a 500 kilohertz clock, not a 800. About a year or so later, as the process was improved, there was a speed-selected version of the 8008 called the 8008-1. But you generally don't, you charge a lot more for those because you don't want to have to throw away those 500 kilohertz spots, which are most of the ones you get are. But the 8008 clock was different than the 4004. It took two clock cycles to do what the 4004 would do in one clock cycle. So now if you look at the times, you're doing, let's say, a multiple 8-bit, you know, like maybe a 32-bit edition. For each 8 bits, the 4004 would have taken about 160 microseconds. 8008 would have taken about 210. So it was about, you know, a third slower. <laughs> Interesting. 